well welcome back. I haven't done my diary piece in a long time. I haven't really done much fishing this year unfortunately. I uh, had a new baby so fishing time has been a little bit limited. Um, but I've got plans this winter and I'm hopeful to get out one night a week on this water. Um, there's a lovely mirror in here that I'm trying to catch. It's also got some lovely old commons in it. Some, some big fish as well, you know, big, bigger, sort of mid 30s. Um, potentially one of the commons is even bigger. So there's some real nice old ones to go at. I arrived here yesterday. Um, I got the rods out pretty sharpish yesterday, late afternoon, because it was just getting dark. So we're just going to go back there now. Well, I'm just going to show you where I've got the rods. There is one cast. Let's just move down here a little bit. Sorry for the amateur footage, but there's one. See where my finger is pointing? Uh, the aperture's about 3.2 and it's very dark, so you'll have to see where my finger's pointing, but it's around here, going towards this, uh, this bush area. I've managed to wander all the way around the lake onto this island here, um, where I've put some bait all around this. Um, there's this little dot island here and a little gap. Um, it's quite known for, for doing a few fish, so I've got one in there. It's pretty clear. Um, a little bit of clag on the bottom, a little bit of sort of bottom weed and bits of silkweed, but relatively clear. I'm getting a drop, um, so I've got a little hinge on there. Then if I just take you around, see that old shed? Um, how on focus is it? Yeah, we're pretty in focus. Um, I've got one, I don't know, 40, 50 yards out, um, sort of in line with the shed uh, around this sort of area. It's just some very smooth silt um, in four to five foot of water. Um, nice little clearing, so I've got another another hinge on that over. Only four spawns of bait. I'm going to keep bait to a minimum today. Um, and then just as I move over, there is sort of in this area you can see like a, a hanging branch there. That's my marker. Um, and then about, I don't know, 50, 60 yards is another real clearing. Um, real like um, almost pea shingle. It, it really sort of taps, really, really taps on the rod tip. Um, as I bring it past so that's an old feeding spot one that I've caught from in the past in the winter um, so yeah I'm, I'm really happy with that spot um, and I've, again I've got a hinge on there real low line um, northern special because it's on quite hard terrain um, I'm fishing it pretty low um, so yeah they're the three rods on those three spots I'm going to keep my eyes nice and peeled on the water although they don't show uh, a huge amount in here mostly at night time if they're going to um, so I'm going to keep the uh, the old earlobes on the lookout or on the hear out. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's just getting dark now. So I'm going to have a cup of char um, and crack on. I've got my laptop with me to do uh, to uh, to do a bit of work this evening um, just to catch up on things. And yeah, I'm hopeful I can get a nice early winter bite. But um, welcome back to the new diary. Well, I'm not one for um, for plugging crap products, but here is a neat little product, bang, that I use in the winter. Well, actually, throughout the year, it's a little ridge monkey light that um, that sort of magnets onto the top of your bivvy. Oh, you can just see. Sorry, it's real dark now. There's a little magnet, and there's the light. So let there be light. Well chuffed with this uh, with this neat little product and one that I will use all winter. Nice. Okay, so you saw where I placed all the rods. It soon got dark and, uh, and I was into my dinner. Annoyingly, I did bring me Ridge Monkey and I had some chicken dippers, chicken dippers even, and chips for dinner. And uh, I forgot my Ridge Monkey, so it was an absolute schoolboy error. I contemplated cooking it in my kettle, which I have done before. Um, but I didn't want to put the old girl through uh, through that kind of carnage, so um, I ended up ordering a takeaway. So I had a nice uh, chicken korma, actually no, it was chicken tikka masala, think about it. Uh, pilau rice and, um, and pashwari naan bread, so that was nice on a chilly winter's evening. Um, soon polished that off, and while actually, while I was eating that, I was getting some really savage liners on the, on the middle rod, and the right hand rod actually. Um, the rod in the sort of silty gully at sort of 40 yards um, that started getting a few a few
few liners, so I was hopeful. Um, and then early this morning, the middle rod absolutely ripped off, and uh, after a bit of a, a bit of a strange, strange fight, um, it was a real heavy, weedy fight. Didn't really tear around at all. Just a very solid, solid heavy fight. Um, Flick the head torch on, and I could see a big common sort of wallowing in close, and uh, slipped her under the net, or slipped her into the net even, and uh, there was a colossal common line in the bottom. Um, Hoisted her up on the scales, 36 pounds on the nose, and um, I've got Mr Grice coming down to do me some photos. So uh, I can't wait to see her, can't wait to show you guys the fish. I think it's the box common, um, and it's a real, real warrior. So uh, yeah, for now, I'm gonna uh, sit back and enjoy my tea. What an absolute schoolboy error just drop this on the floor absolute schmuck <sighs> great it's gonna be fun uh, one thing that um, I just wanted to note was just talk about the tactics quickly um, I've got three northern specials um, on, uh, on on each of the rods um, that have been really dosed up in the, uh, in the matching booster spray. I love to do this, in, well actually all year round, not just in the winter, um, just to give them that real potent citrusy sort of zing. Um, I keep peppering them up with, um, with the booster spray and when they dry out, I'll give them another boost um, so they'll be better so then, and then they'll, then they'll sort of suck in all the goodness again. And I'll just keep doing that sort of three, four, maybe five times and eventually you'll, you'll almost build like a little coating um, of the booster spray and, and they're really, really potent and fantastic particularly in winter um, but all year round really so I'm fishing the northern specials over the top of um, chopped up live system triple uh, X and some uh, chopped up tigers as well um, just by chopping them up I feel like they're releasing the uh, they're releasing the flavors and the smells um, and all the goodness in the boilie a lot more than they would be if they were encased um, as like a whole boilie um, I also uh, boil them up as well to make them, them softer, a little bit more porous um, and again I just think this helps in pumping out more of the goodness of the baits um, and then I pour over the top of it some Minamino which is a very very soluble um, it's not oily at all and it disperses easily in cold water um, and it just gives, the, gives it another sort of fruity um, sweet appeal to the bait really um, so any, anything you can do to give them even more attraction in the cold water um, then I say go for it. I'm gagging to get this fish out. I'm hoping Grice will hurry up along that A14. Um, and yeah, we'll uh, we'll show you a rather colossal common. Well, what a start to the new diary piece. 36 pounds on the nose. A very old Cambridgeshire Common. Fell to a white Northern Special, as I said earlier. And he's very, very angry and wants to go back. Well chuffed with that. Real result. Fantastic start to my winter campaign.
What's happened, James? Huh? What's happened? <laughs> I uh, kind of fell in after that fish. <sighs> Can't even get the boot off. Look. Fantastic. <laughs> Absolutely fantastic. Oh well, I've just had a 36 pounder. <laughs>